clearly understood what this strange force of electricity was. The academic establishment at the time thought that electricity was, you know, like a fluid flowing through a pipe, pushing its way along. But in 1821, a Danish researcher showed that when you pass an electrical current through a wire and place a compass near it, it deflected the needle at right angles. This was the first time researchers had seen electricity affect a magnet. The first glimpse of two forces, which had previously been seen as entirely separate, now unified in some inexplicable way. Faraday, come look at this. Another bright spark around here, but you can work it out. Ersted's reported an amazing finding. We're just replicating it here. Let's try the compass on the other side. Now, that is remarkable. But if the electrical force is flowing through the wire, why does the needle not move in the same direction, parallel to the wire? Quite. Let's try turning the whole apparatus round. Again, Newman. So, the electrical force goes this way, the compass points that way. How can one affect the other? Perhaps the electricity is throwing out some invisible force as it moves along. What? Perhaps some sort of electrical force is emanating outwards from the wire. Oh, my dear boy, let me tell you that at the University of Cambridge, electricity flows through a wire, not sideways to it. Well, that may be what they teach at Cambridge, but it doesn't explain what's happening before our eyes. No, no, let's just get on. Let's swap the compass to below the wire. Why the compass was deflected at right angles, why the electricity was affecting the compass at all, dumbfounded Davy and many others. As we celebrate the marriage of Michael and Sarah. For Faraday, however, the problem became an obsession. It was a fascination inspired by his religion. For him, this was a way to understand God's hidden mysteries. Good deeds. Our love for our fellow man. There is a small, almost persecuted group in London called the Sandemanians. They were religious, not really a sect, they were just a small subset, sort of like Quakers. Faraday was a member of that group, it was a very gentle, decent group. They believed that underneath the whole surface of reality, everything was created by God in a unified way, that if you opened up one little part of it, you could see how everything was connected. Michael Faraday was someone who, like Einstein, thought in terms of pictures. Faraday was different from anybody else. He had a flair for understanding his experiments, for understanding what was really going on inside them. By methodically placing a compass all around an electrified wire, Faraday started to notice a pattern. What everyone else at the time had been taught was that forces travel in straight lines. Faraday was different. Faraday imagined that invisible lines of force flowed around an electric wire. And then he imagined that a magnet had similar lines emerging from it, and that those lines would get caught up in this flow. It was a bit like a flag in a wind. But Faraday's great leap of the imagination was to turn this experiment on its head. Instead of an electrified wire moving a compass, he wondered if he could get a static magnet to move a dangling wire. I've never seen you like this, Faraday. <laughs> you look like a happy child. <laughs> I'm shaking, Newman. Underneath, I'm shaking. <laughs> you see, John? You see? Yes. <laughs> This is the experiment of the century. It's the invention of the electric motor. Scale up the magnets and the wires, make them really big. Attach heavy weights to them, and they'll be dragged along. But almost more importantly, he's inventing a new kind of physics here. Although he didn't realize it at the time, Faraday had also just demonstrated the overarching principle of energy. 
the chemicals in the battery had been transformed into electricity in the wire, which had combined with the magnet to produce motion. Behind all these various forces, there was a common energy. A couple of months earlier, Davy had been elected president of the Royal Society, which was the elite body of English science. But then he saw this great discovery published in the Quarterly Journal of Science. I don't know if he was envious, but he certainly saw that this young man who had been his assistant, this mere blacksmith's son, had come up with one of the greatest discoveries of the Victorian era. Davy accuses Faraday of plagiarizing similar work from another eminent British scientist, William Wollaston. So, Faraday, what does Wollaston make of all this? He's written to me and assures me that he's taken no offense. And he acknowledges that what I published was entirely my own work. Right, right. Davy is just being an ass. But will Davy now retract his allegation? Sadly, no. In fact, he's still vehemently opposed to you being elected a member of the society. Really? And what do you think? Faraday, my dear boy, you have my vote. Oh, mine. And I believe you even have Wollstones. <laughs> oh. What a mess. Well, no matter. No matter. It's the science that counts. So tell me, how does this wire of yours spin round its magnet? What mysterious forces are at play? There seems to be an electromagnetic interaction. In my mind, I see a, a swirling array of lines of force spinning out of the electrified wire, like a spiraling web. But invisible lines of force, it's all a bit vague, isn't it? Faraday, might I have a word in private? Certainly. Listen, Faraday, let's stop this nonsense. I want you to take down your ballot paper from the notice board. Sir Humphrey, I see no reason to take it down. My friends have proposed me. It is they who put the paper up. I will not take it down. Good day. Faraday was elected to the Royal Society. Davy died five years later, a victim of his penchant for laughing gas. In time, Faraday's world of invisible forces would lead to a whole new understanding of energy. He'd started what Einstein would later call the Great Revolution. Albert Einstein grew up in an industrial society obsessed with energy. All the forces of nature had been unified and man thought he was the master of this new power. Young Einstein was going to pull this cosy world view apart. My father and uncle wanted to make their fortune by bringing electric light to the streets of Germany. From an early age, I loved to look at machines, understand how things work. He's going to kill himself. Albert, stay there. I experienced a miracle when my father showed me a compass. I trembled and grew cold. There had to be something behind objects that lay deeply hidden. At high school, they had their ideas about what I should learn. I had my own. I was merely interested in physics, maths, philosophy, and playing the violin. Everything else was a bore. Einstein! On your feet! As you obviously know everything about geology, 